Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP and once again, this is the one hour chart. We're still sitting here hovering around 50 cents right now. But one thing I noticed is the crypto space is changing. All of a sudden, there's all this FUD. And if it's not FUD, then it's people talking about IPOs and Ripple. If Ripple gets that IPO tomorrow, that's it. XRP's going to $500,000. I mean, come on. Do you honestly believe that? And then if it's not that, you have people saying, oh, I wish BlackRock would buy XRP so the price would move. I could care less if BlackRock buys one XRP or not you know why because we're holding a cryptocurrency that has a ton of utility behind it it's built to bridge world's currencies from one country to another working like a trust layer once that starts to take off that's when the price of xrp will go with it i don't care if blackrock buys xrp but that people want that to happen. You're not holding Bitcoin that has no utility. You don't need somebody to buy up a whole pile of XRP for the price to move. It will move when it's ready. And, you know, now we all of a sudden also have naysayers. Somebody says something about XRP and right away there's somebody there to, to prove them wrong. And if they can't prove them wrong, then they just make up bullshit to prove them wrong. And it's getting ridiculous and it's getting out of hand. So the naysayers on X will buy XRP when it reaches $100. And that's absolutely true. You know, there's people right now sitting on the sidelines with stacks of cash saying, once XRP breaks a dollar, I'm going all in on XRP. Instead of buying it while it's at 50 cents, you're going to have buyers at $3 and $5 and $10 all the way to the top because that's how the crypto space works. Think about it like this. You came into crypto now. You're buying XRP at rock bottom prices. Two years from now, people are going to wish they could go back to this time and buy XRP at the prices you're able to buy it at today. Then there's this. Oh my God, this is insane. XRP just glitched to $146, the true value of XRP. But here's the thing. These glitches are made up glitches. They're fake. And you know, we don't need people faking glitches on this cryptocurrency. XRP has glitched time and time again to $10,000. And a lot of people thought that was testing being done on XRP at those prices. And that might be true also. But we don't need people making up glitches around this cryptocurrency. It has true value. And if you know what you're holding, you could ignore all of this and just wait for that moment when XRP runs on its own merit. Then there's this, and this puts it all into perspective around crypto. Take a listen. This comes from Burger King back in 1993, accepting credit cards for the first time. Cash or credit? What? The home of the Whopper is offering cash or credit. I think it's pretty bad if you have to use a credit card when you go to a fast food restaurant for something as little as $3.10. If I use my GM card, I get a 5% rebate. Thank you. If I eat here long enough, I'll be able to buy a pickup truck. Burger King bosses say workers won't have to figure out how much change the customer gets back. I just hope it doesn't slow things down at the cash cash and carry that people are going to be having to call New York and get get the confirmation or, you know, whatever it is, because when I want a Whopper, I want it now. Just another way to spend money. I'm sure it'll work for people on vacation when they don't have to do something, but I can't imagine it working on a day-to-day -day basis here. So far, the smallest credit has been for $2.50, the largest just over 10 and think about it, back then, that was probably revolutionary. 
You know, people probably thought nobody's ever going to use a credit card to buy fast food. Yet today, people do it on a daily basis. The same thing's going to happen around crypto. All the people right now saying they're never going to use crypto for anything. It's monopoly money and it's not real. All of a sudden, they're going to be using crypto. That's how early you actually are. And you're lucky enough to get in while you're getting in now. Because later, when these prices on XRP are skyrocketing, people are still going to have to have it. But at that moment, you will most likely be a millionaire or a multimillionaire. Expert explains why Ripple didn't add XRP to Liquidity Hub despite legal clarity. And this comes from Bill Morgan, and he's saying that it could be because of the SEC appeal, hindering XRP addition to Ripple's Liquidity Hub, which makes a lot of sense. Until, you know, I still feel that the SEC is holding back Ripple even still. And until that case is totally 100% done and over with, we're always going to be held back in this place or that place, especially here in the United States. But, you know, once that case does finally wrap up, I think Ripple already has all the groundwork in place for XRP to start moving. IMO, both. Should you buy Ripple stock or invest in XRP? Now, a lot of people are saying, I would, I want to own Ripple stock. I think Ripple's stock is going to skyrocket in price. But is it a better investment than XRP? I don't think so. Because Ripple is not going to move the world's money on a daily basis. XRP is going to move the world's money. I think XRP has potential to hit high, high numbers in the future. Ripple, I'm sure... Their stock is going to do great, but I don't see it surpassing the value of XRP. Prominent member of the XRP community and blockchain analyst, Crypto Eddie, has weighed in on why, contrary to some public opinions, Ripple cannot control its native tokens XRP's price. And I, you know, this always is talked about. Is Ripple controlling the price of XRP? Is Ripple holding the price down on XRP? She goes on to say because XRP token is decentralized, there's no way Ripple can set the token's price or control the token's price. And I agree with that. I don't think that's what's holding us back. Honestly, I think it's because we haven't seen XRP go fully live all around the world yet. That time is still coming. And we haven't seen the true utility of XRP kick in yet. That's what I mean. And, you know, once that does happen, you're either going to be holding XRP or you're going to be priced out very fast and left with nothing but regret. What does the future of XRP Ledger look like? Now, I only want to point out one thing here that David Schwartz says. Schwartz pointed out that the XRP Ledger is still on track to disrupt the global financial system. He mentioned a time when he presented a demo that allowed users to transact with different currencies on the ledger, which portrayed how special the blockchain could be and its role in facilitating cross-border transactions. When they talk about disrupting the global financial system, I think that was what got us tied up in an SEC lawsuit to begin with. Ripple was pushing ahead too fast. XRP was gaining so much traction back then and JP Morgan didn't like it and I'm sure a lot of other big banks didn't like it either and I think that was the whole cause of the SEC case to begin with but now that we got clarity around XRP we're going to see those same banks want to get involved with Ripple want to get involved with XRP because if not they will just be left behind but David goes on to say this he says it's going to take over to the payments world, but not on day one. The piece we hadn't seen before in Bitcoin was proof of work. But the magic, I think, 
comes from the fact that there is no central operator. All transactions are public. All the transaction rules are public. Anybody can enforce transaction rules. Like that was kind of where the magic was. And so we kind of took it apart. And the use case that we decided to target in the early days was payments. Payments are a multi-trillion dollar problem. And it seems like cryptocurrencies are just naturally suited to make payments better. And it's specifically, we kind of focused on cross-border international payments, not because domestic payments are great, but because it's cross-border payments are the worst. Like if you, anyone who's made an international payment probably has stories of, of bad experiences. And so the worse the thing you start with, the less amazing you have to be to be better. And I think like, I think we can eventually be amazing and sort of take over the payments world, but we're not going to be there day one. And so we, if we can't, you know, if we can't succeed against the worst part of the problem, why are we, why are we bothering? So there you have it. They're going to solve a multi-trillion dollar problem. Yet people are so concerned about the price of XRP right now. And that's why I try not to focus so much on it. And I try to tell you, you know, always be holding, but expect anything to happen at the same time. Because I want you to be able to still continue holding this cryptocurrency no matter what. Because I think there's still going to be that big shakeout moment possibly. Because they don't want me or you holding XRP. They don't think we're even worthy enough to be holding this cryptocurrency. So the, if, as long as you can hold through anything, you will get to the riches that come in the end. And that's why I always like to point that out. And I always like to point out where XRP is going in the future at the same time. This way you can keep that dream alive, that vision you once had. If, if you lost it, I want you to get it back. This way you could still see what's coming. Because that, that new financial system, it is right there on the horizon now. You can see it coming. You know, two years ago, you couldn't see it at all. But today, it's so much clearer. And as long as you can continue holding this cryptocurrency, you will get financial freedom. So, Crypto Influencer says XRP community is under a coordinated attack. And this is what I was talking about at the beginning of this video. You know, the crypto space for some reason seems like it's changing. So, according to Prosper, a lack of coverage from mainstream media following the summary judgment in the U.S. SEC versus Ripple case was proof of a coordinated attack, despite being one of the biggest and most high-profile news stories in the crypto industry over the past three years. The summary judgment, which handed a partial victory to Ripple, was not widely covered, and that's absolutely true. It was nowhere. It should have been talked about a hell of a lot more than it was. The crypto influencer also cited the synchronized and cons constant fear, uncertainty, and doubt that has been peddled against XRP and Ripple over the past three years. FUD has played a considerable role in spreading misinformation and preventing more adoption of XRP. Meanwhile, XRP has lost nearly 17% of its value over the past four weeks. Prosper also highlighted private entities like JP Morgan discussing XRP with the SEC. JP Morgan is releasing a blockchain-based token for faster cross-border deposits that is reportedly in close competition with XRP. Now, I don't see that JP Morgan coin as competition with XRP at all, and I know Ripple has a very big head start on JP Morgan as well. But the FUD in the crypto space, it's growing almost like a cancer on a daily basis. And it's getting absolutely ridiculous at this point. You know, people don't seem to, you know, understand that new investors are coming into crypto on a daily basis. Then they get here. They invest in XRP or XLM or XDC or what any other ISO cryptocurrency. And most, most likely somebody led them to those cryptocurrencies. Now all of a sudden all they see is FUD. How XRP is going to zero because of this JP Morgan coin. How XRP is a nothing but a scam coin and Ripple controls the price of XRP. And then all of a sudden these people sell their investment and they leave crypto for good. Or they just get discouraged from it because of all the FUD. People need to stop. And a lot of the people that are doing this are people that have been in this 
space for a long period of time. I'm talking two, three, four years. And I know some of the names of the people that are doing this. And it's not right in any way. And it, listen, if you're frustrated with your investment, then just keep it to yourself. You know, people are here to make money and you're playing with people's money and i think a lot of people don't realize that or they somehow forgot what it was like when they first got into crypto and you know that's why i make these videos i want to keep people enthusiastic i want to keep them optimistic i want to keep them positive in what they hold and i want to show them the value in what they hold and that's why i make these videos on a daily basis because there's way too much fud in the crypto space right now and i would rather lead somebody to financial freedom than fud them out of their crypto holdings that's what it comes down to for me but let's stay patient let's stay positive and let's get rich together with that said i'm going to wrap up this video i want to thank you all for watching i appreciate all of you i'll see you in the next one have a great night